Hi guys and welcome to this continuation of the AutoHotKey tutorials for advanced users. Uh, in today's video, the topic that I'm going to be covering is the onMessage function. This is um, similar to the DLL call in the sense that actually a lot of people are afraid of it. Um, but again, the function itself is easy to learn. It is not uh, very complex. It gives you a lot of possibilities. What is difficult about it um, uh, is, again, something that has to do with Microsoft itself. I'm going to try to explain it um, as, as clear as possible. But before we move on, on to that particular function, we have to talk about um, what is a message. Because as the function says, it says on message, it lets you know that what it does is that it captures a specific Windows message and then it uh, runs a function. That's it. So when that particular message is captured by the uh, onMessage function, um, the onMessage function is going to call a function that you define yourself. Now, what is a message? Well, the, the operating system, in this case Windows, um, keeps track of certain messages being sent and received by programs like, for example, let's say, let's, let's grab a uh, my script, for example, um, and uh, I'm just using in here this program called WinSpector that allows you to see the messages being called by a specific program. In this case, we're going to just simply grab my script. So that's the main window, and I'm going to right click on it and see the messages. So what um, you will see is that when I bring this window to the front, nothing happens because everything is filtered <laughs> actually there you go now uh, let's clear this up clear the message filter and clear there you go so now when i bring this window into the front you will see how many messages are being sent just because that window is active and yeah you probably have guessed that at the moment windows is sending and receiving and receiving thousands if not millions of messages per minute and um, there's a lot of messages being sent just because I'm moving the mouse inside that particular window there's a lot of messages that that program is sending to the operating system so what we want to do is capture one of those messages depending on which one you want to get um, we're gonna capture one of those message and when that message is captured, we're going to perform an action. So why would that be useful to us? Well, let's say that you want to, um, uh, for example, every time the user clicks on a, on a GUI, you want to actually perform an action. Let's make the simple action of creating a, um, let's say, a a message box that's <laughs> my usual example right everything has to be with a message box I'm gonna go back to this program again in a few minutes but basically how it goes is the following we use the on message function and it accepts three parameters two of them are meritory you have to put those parameters and the third parameter is optional I usually do not use it. I'm not going to go too much onto it. The first parameter is which message you want to actually track. In this case, we said that we want to track whenever the user clicks on a GUI. So how do I get the messages? The first easy way is to go to the AutoHotKey help file and go there to the Windows messages uh, section which contains a list of all these little messages. The messages are actually um, sta static uh, variables on the on the Windows uh, uh, how do I say the Windows code that um, they are each of those variables is assigned a specific value. We can we what we need is actually the value. You cannot use the name itself. I cannot just simply put in here the name like wm uh, l button down which is the the message that I'm going to be tracking right now. You cannot do that because uh, in here, unless that is a variable that contains the number that you're looking for. But in general, you have to put the value. And in this case, if I go down here, this key down first, and L button, here we go, L button down is zero. Uh, X is a hexadecimal number, 201 in this case. You just grab this and put it right here on your code. 
um so we're tr so we're tracking the message 0x201 which is basically whenever you click your mouse that message is sent to the to the operating system and then we tell the on message function which function we want to run so let's grab function let's put it like this it's just simple so let's create our function first just so I go out of that and then I say message box you have clicked my friend or something of the sort and just to finish this up let's create a little GUI show then let's say 200 width and 200 height and let's put a returning here that's our code so it doesn't matter where you put this as soon as this particular uh, function is defined um, that message is going to be tracked hold on I'm not so sure if yeah the position of them yeah the position of the on message function is uh, is relevant let me check on that so that's how you need why <laughs> why you need to check on the help file on all the time so we have the on message and um, oh the function name is also optional so if you do not put a function's name what happens let me see what happens if you omit this parameter and the next one to retrieve the name of the function I don't know. okay so basically if you if you omit both parameters the function name and the name and the max threads so you just put the message number what the on message function is going to do is return the name or actually the yeah it is going to retrieve the name of the function currently monitoring that particular message so that is something that maybe some people are going to find very useful some others don't in general what i came here to do was to check if the position of this thing is actually a function so the position of it depends um, it depends where you put it so as long as you put it for example usually I put it at the beginning of my script so I know that it is checking for that message since the beginning I think you can you can use the if the if statements to check some option some some um, conditions and if that condition is met then you check on that message or not depending on what you want to do but in general I put it at the beginning of my script check for that message right away and um, yeah as soon as I start my script I just created a GUI of 200 pixels by 200 pixels and whenever you click on anywhere in there that particular function which by the way is wrong um, this particular function is gonna be executed simple as that the on message function is simple I'm gonna tell you where the confusion and the problems come so if I run this up whenever I click inside that box I'm gonna get one of those things now uh, one message box no so it is just so simple no? now where comes the problem some messages um, this function that I'm creating uh, right now as you can see I did not put any parameters on it but the the on message function after it calls that functions it passes four parameters to it and this is where some people get confused so right now as you can see I didn't put any of the parameters this is optional but if you want to do some more complex stuff and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about in a few seconds you will have to at least uh, specify one two three or the four parameters that um, you are allowed to use the first parameter is something in something called W param you can put any names actually you can put whatever name you want for each of your parameters but um, I'm gonna put them as Windows calls them so you know for consistency and that you don't lose yourself when I go to MSDN because I'm gonna show you something in MSDN in a few seconds and those are the names that they use the first parameter is gonna be W param the second is gonna be L param and then the third parameter is the message and the last parameter the HWND of the control that actually triggered this now these two parameters I'm going to explain them la later but this is basically which message you're actually checking on 
Why is that? Because you can actually check for two or more messages. Thank you.